Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This video is part one of a series of three videos on the overall subject of probability distributions. Part two will describe the central role which distributions play in statistics. And part three will tell you which distribution can be used for which statistical need. In addition to these three, the book also has individual articles on each of the seven families of distributions shown here. My plan is to eventually produce videos for each of them. See statisticsfromatoz.com slash videos for the latest status of this work. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll go quickly through a list of keys to understanding in order to give you the overall picture. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For probability distributions, there are four keys to understanding. The first key to you is, a distribution, also known as a probability distribution, is a set of values of a variable along with the associated probability of each value of the variable. The distributions are usually plotted with the variable on the horizontal axis and the probability on the vertical axis. The second KTU says that named distributions usually occur in families. For example, normal distributions, T distributions, binomial distributions, etc. Key to understanding number three tells us that different distributions can have discrete or continuous probability curves for discrete or continuous data. And the final KTU states, distributions can be numerically described by three categories of parameters. Central tendency, for example, mean. Variation or spread, for example, standard deviation. And shape, for example, skew. And here on one page are all four keys to understanding the concept of probability distributions. You may wish to pause the video at this point to read them all together. Let's now begin our detailed explanation of each key to understanding. A distribution, also known as a probability distribution, is a set of values of a variable along with the associated probability of each value of the variable. For example, here is a graph of a particular distribution known as the standard normal distribution. The values on the horizontal axis are those for the variable z. We can see that the probability of z equals 0 is about 40%, and that the probability of z equals negative 1 or plus 1 is about 20%. These are point probabilities. The probability of a point value, like the probability of z equals 0, or of z equals 1, or of z equals negative 1. The probability of an individual point is not that useful, but since a distribution gives us the probability of all the points on the horizontal axis, we can use calculus integrals to calculate cumulative probabilities. And cumulative probabilities are central to statistical analysis. In this example, we are using the standard normal distribution in its test statistic Z. We have gathered a sample of data, and we have used the formula for Z to calculate a point value for Z from the data. Z was calculated to be 1.2 in this example. The Z distribution can give us the cumulative probability of all values of Z from 1.2 to positive infinity. This is available from statistical software or tables. That probability, P, is calculated to be 11.5%. The hatched area under the curve to the right of 1.2 constitutes 
11.5% of the total area under the curve. This is the p-value, which is a key part of statistical analysis. We'll go into more detail on this in the part two video. Key to understanding number two. Named distributions usually occur in families. For example, there are normal distributions, T distributions, F distributions, binomial distributions, etc. Here we show two members of the exponential family of distributions. You can see how the shape as well as the probabilities vary with the values of the mean. The mean is the parameter which defines an individual distribution within the exponential family of distributions. Other distributions, like the normal and the chi-square distributions, are defined by two parameters. The standard normal distribution, which is the z distribution shown earlier, is the unique normal distribution which is defined by specifying a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Different values for the mean and standard deviation will define different members of the normal family of distributions. Here is a list of the most common families of distributions and the properties which define the individual members of each family. The individual videos for each family will go into more detail on each of these. These graphs show the difference between a distribution that uses discrete data and has a discrete graph, the one on the left, compared to a distribution with continuous data and a continuous curve, the one on the right. For a discrete data distribution, the values of the variable x are non-negative integers because they are counts. There is no probability shown for 1.5, for example, because 1.5 is not an integer and so it is not a legitimate value for x. The probabilities for discrete data distributions are shown as separate columns. There is no space between the columns because there are no values on the horizontal axis between the individual integers. For continuous distributions, the values of the horizontal axis variable are real numbers, and there are an infinite number of them between any two integers. So the curves are smooth and continuous. Continuous data are also called measurement data. Common examples are things that are measured, like length, weight, pressure, etc. The probabilities for continuous distributions are infinitesimal points on smooth curves. Here's a sum summary of commonly used distributions and the type of data they have and how they display it. The binomial, hypergeometric, and Poisson families all use discrete data only, and their probability curves are not really curves, but are stair-step shapes as shown on the previous slide. The exponential, the normal, normal, and the T families all use continuous data only, and they display their probabilities as smooth, continuous curves. For these six distributions, for, which are described in the first two rows of the table above, the data used to create the values on a horizontal axis come from a single sample or a single population or a single process, and the data are either discrete or continuous. In the bottom row, the f and chi-square distributions are hybrids. Their horizontal axis variable is calculated from a ratio of two numbers, and the source data don't have to be one type or another. Being a ratio, the horizontal axis variable, f or chi-square, is continuous. The probability curve is smooth and continuous. Distributions can be numerically described by three categories of calculated parameters. First, there is central tendency, also known as center. This can be specified by a number for the mean, which is also known as the average, or a number for the mode or for the median. Second is variation, which measures how spread out the distribution is. In the three illustrations at the bottom of the slide, the distribution on the left is more spread out than the distribution in the middle. 
Variation is also known as variability, dispersion, spread, or scatter. Common measures of variation include standard deviation, variance, and range. Less commonly used are measures of shape. Two measures of shape are skew and kurtosis. Skew tells you whether the long tail of a distribution points left or right and how much it is stretched in that direction. If the skew equals zero, the distribution is symmetrical from left to right. Kurtosis tells you how pointy the distribution curve is. The normal distribution has a kurtosis of zero. If a distribution is pointier than the normal distribution, it has a positive kurtosis. Less pointy distributions, which then have heavier tails, have a negative kurtosis. Okay, this concludes our overview of what distributions are. There are two more videos planned for distributions as a whole, and then several more on individual families of distributions. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me that more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsfromatoz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job while studying or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. I'd recommend following my blog at statisticsfromatoz.com slash blog. I've got some things there that hopefully you will find interesting, like a statistics tip of the week series, as well as posts showing that you are not alone if you're confused by statistics. I'll also be posting on the Facebook page, Statistics from A to Z, and on Twitter as at Stats A to Z.